In this video, we're going to go over the Zoll defibrillator. When you're going to use the Zoll defibrillator, first thing that you want to check is to make sure that you see these two green lights and this green check mark on the top of the machine. If you ever see a red X, you cannot use the defibrillator until the red X is fixed. Most of the time, when you do a self-check, the red X will go away. To do the self-check, make sure your pads are attached. Turn the monitor into defib. Then decrease the joules to 30. Then press charge and shock. The machine will tell you whether the test has passed. The top two lights are the battery indicator. While the machine is plugged in, the battery should be green once it's fully charged. And then this light shows you whether or not it is plugged into the wall. This machine is designed for the pads to always be in place. Once you connect the pads, they are locked into place. You can unlock them by pressing this button and pulling them apart. The pads must be sealed and not expired in order for them to work. On the top of the machine, you will find the battery. You can open and change the battery if needed by pushing here. To place paper in the machine, make sure the white side is facing up and that the folded corner is facing your right shoulder. Then pull the paper forward so that it's ready to print, placing the pads. When you open the package, these are the pads you will see. You will place the cross approximately at the nipple line or the mid sternum. This cross is where you will perform CPR. In the front, you only need this pad. Then you will place the other pad on the back below the left scapula. If for any reason you cannot turn the patient and put the pad on the back, these are the alternate pad placement positions. If, however, you use this position, you will need to use the three lead EKG connected to the monitor. And in order to do that, you will need to take out this plug and plug the EKG leads in here. To silence the heart rate on the machine so that it's less disturbing, go to Options, QRS Volume, and decrease the volume. CPR. This machine is designed to give you feedback on your CPR, so the best placement of this monitor is in front of the healthcare professionals that are performing the CPR. This purple area will monitor how effective your CPR is. Once you start CPR, you will see these options. Let's go through them. The first option you will see is depth. For adults, the ideal depth is 2 inches. Anything below or higher than that number will be highlighted in yellow, letting you know that you need to adjust your CPR. Eventually, if you continue to not go deep enough, you will get a verbal prompt. Push harder. Next, you will see rate. The rate needs to be 100 beats per minute. If your CPR rate is off, a metronome will kick in to help you adjust your rate. Next, you will see release. This checks for a ventricular refill, basically meaning you need to fully compress to a depth of two inches in adults, and then fully release to allow the ventricles to fill up with blood. Your goal is to have the whole rectangle solid purple. Lastly, you will see CPR PPI. PPI stands for Performance Perfusion Indicator. This is displayed by a diamond-shaped symbol which appears on the CPR dashboard to show you how well your compressions are being performed. Your goal is to have the entire diamond be solid purple. When you stop CPR for a pulse check, it will show you how long you've been idle for. Remember, to check for a pulse, we're only supposed to stop CPR for 10 seconds. Anything highlighted in yellow is prompting you to adjust your compressions. Again, this device needs to be right in front of whoever is performing CPR so they can get immediate feedback on the quality of their compressions. In the case where you need to shock a patient, you will turn the monitor onto defib setting. The monitor will default to 120 joules, which is the recommended joules on this device for the first shock. After the initial shock is placed, you will see the joules increase. As you see here, the joules automatically increased from 120 to 150. This will increase up to a maximum of 200 joules. Now, let's go over the soft keys on the bottom. Parameter. You can change the parameter of the EKG, the SpO2, and the CO2. This is also where you can zero the end tidal CO2 monitor if needed. The CO2 monitor is the cord attached to the back of the monitor. 
Next, you will see a key called code marker key. You can record things that happened during the code. For example, what medications were given or if the patient was intubated. And then at the end of the code, you can print out the information and use this to help fill out your code form. To print, select report data and then print chart. Then go to print range and select which event you would like to print. In order to cardiovert a patient, press the soft key on the bottom that says sync. You will see white dots that are marking the R waves. Next, select the joules that the provider wants and then charge the device. And then you're supposed to press and hold the shock button. By holding the shock button, you're helping the device deliver the shock at the right time of the QRS interval. This device comes with AED mode, which can be turned on and off by pressing the analyze button. Stand clear. Perform CPR. Stand clear. To pace your patient, turn the device onto pacer mode, and then use this knob here to increase the milliamps. A normal capture is usually around 60 milliamps, and once you reach the pacer threshold, meaning you see the pacer spikes, it is good practice to increase the milliamps by about 10%.